So I wanted to walk you through an example of um, an Excel or, or in this case, Google Sheets example of, of how to do a sales comparison grid. And the first step in doing that is going to be filling out something called a market data grid. And this, you're not really doing a lot of analysis in this first stage. What you're doing is getting everything down on paper. You're getting all the characteristics the transaction characteristics and the property characteristics written down for the subject property, because this is what you're going to kind of compare to. And then you're getting all the characteristics written down for each of the comparable sales. So for example, I've got three comparable sales ranging from 157,000 to 169. There's no formula that's going on. I'm just saying, okay, the subject property, Property rights that I'm appraising are fee simple. It's just, you know, owned outright, conventional financing. Um, it's an arm's length sale and it's selling the data values today. And then I go and I look at the information on this comparable sale I pulled, comp one, and good. It's, I would just want to make sure that it's got the same property rights being conveyed in the sale. Financing terms are similar, conditions of sale similar. Um, you know, it's also arm's length. And this one is sold um, within a month, so within the last month. And then comp sale two, vice versa, this one's a little older, and then this one's even older still. That's fine, I just need to have this all kind of written down so that I know to make adjustments for them. And as far as location, this subject property is in Parkway Estates, and, and it's good to kind of pick stuff as close as possible if you can. These comps are all in the same neighborhood. And then we drop down to physical characteristics, like the size of the lot, size of the yard. You can see they're all very similar. This is good. We're getting similar comps. Construction quality, mostly the same. Some are brick, some are siding. Effective age, some of these houses are older. The subject property is relatively newer. They're roughly similar in terms of square footage, although a buyer might discern between 1,800 square feet and, say, 2,000, a little over 2,000. And bathrooms, mostly the same, except this extra, uh, this, this comp sale three has an extra half bath. And so you can see just the general pattern. All we're doing is, is getting information down at this point. And the next step after you get all this written down is to adjust for any of these major differences. We don't make any adjustments for car space, garage spaces here because they're all, you know, the same. So this is great. What we might need to do is make an adjustment for, it looks like this comp sale three has a deck, whereas none of the other ones do. So if buyers in this market discern that a deck is very valuable or you know somewhat valuable, then it might affect the sale price. And so if we're trying to make comp sale three as similar as possible to subject, we're going to have to adjust down the sale price to kind of make it a sale as if it were equivalent to not having a deck. So um, that's the next step. We're gonna take these this information and try and adjust the original transaction price to make it so that uh, it's effectively, these comps are effectively similar in characteristics, more similar in characteristics to the subject property. So that brings us to our sales adjustment grid. And I'm going to look at a dollar-based adjustments uh, grid in this, this worksheet I've built here. Sale price of the comparable. Um, of course, subject is blank because that's what we're trying to value. And um, these are the same as you've seen in the previous sheet. And now we're just going to make adjustments. So these numbers, what we've got here is really a running tally uh, of adjustments. Right now, they all were fee simple conventional financing arm's length. So this running tally is exactly the same as the original transaction price for each comp because we haven't made any adjustments yet. We're just kind of keeping track of stuff. Now, these ones did sell for uh, some time ago, the original sale price for these two, three months and four months ago. And so because this market has risen in value, general market conditions have improved, if this comp sold today, it would sell for more than 167,200. And you know, suppose we quantified that, that market conditions 
would have caused this comp to sell if it sold today instead of a few months ago for, for an extra $1,500, then our running tally of adjust, um, uh, adjustments for this, uh, this transaction price is now 168700 Okay, so these are our transaction adjustments, and there's there hasn't been much that's, that's happened so far. We haven't made a lot of adjustments. Let's drop down to adjustments for property characteristics. The location, they're all in the same neighborhood, so we still don't have any adjustments there. Physical characteristics is where we start to differ. Okay, so lot size, we go back here. This was half an acre, this was half an acre, but these were slightly smaller, and we see you know, this was half an acre, so we're not making an adjustment there. The two are base; they're they're the same in terms of lot size, but these ones had a smaller lot size. So a buyer looks at that; they're going to pay a little bit less because it's a smaller yard, and so we're seeing that reflected in this original transaction price here, one sixty-seven and one fifty-seven. And what we want is that if these were smaller yards slightly smaller than the subject we want to see you know if this price reflected that what would the price be if this was actually 0.5 acres sort of a counterfactual and suppose that we found the value of those additional 0 0.5 acres to be worth about five thousand dollars in this market then the price uh, of this comp if it were 0 0.5 acres instead of 0 0.45 would have increased by $5,000. So we're bumping up this 167 by this additional $5,000 to account to make it more like to make that transaction price more equivalent uh, to the characteristics of the subject property. We do the same thing with uh, construction quality, effective age, living area. Let's take a look at living area. We go back to square footage here. 1960 was the subject property. This one's a little bigger. This one's a little bigger. This one's a little smaller. And if we go here, this one's negative. This one's negative. This one's positive. So it's, it's nicer to have a bigger property. Um, and that's why someone probably paid a little bit more for each of these two comps. And so if we wanted to figure out what they would have paid if the property was a little bit smaller, not 2,060 square feet, but instead 1,960 square feet, we can kind of knock down the price a little bit, not 169, but 169 minus 4,800 uh, to get a property value for this comp that's equivalent if it were actually 1,960 square feet. So again, we're just trying to kind of dial in closer in terms of characteristics to the subject property. There's enough difference here. I mean, it's generally these are similar, but we're getting that much more precise uh, by making these small adjustments. And you might uh, wonder at this point, where do these dollar numbers come from? And this is just an example. So, you know, in the real world, if you were doing this, you would have a good sense of the market. You might use some statistical analysis on lots of property sales to, f to figure out the additional dollar contribution of an additional square footage. That would be just something, you know, if you were doing this on a daily basis, you would learn... Uh, you, you know, you would learn what that number is. And so don't worry about it. You don't need to know, you know, how to get those numbers. That's something that you would actually do if this were doing, you know, you would do it as part of your real job. But the answer is just lots of experience and statistics. Okay, and then finally, we make all our adjustments and we get a single number. And uh, that's going to be our total adjustments for both our transaction characteristics, which in this comp it was zero. There weren't any adjustments for the transaction because they're all the same. But then also our total adjustments for all these physical characteristics. Notice we sum them together. This minus 2,550, it's just the sum of all the adjustments we made, both positive and negative. And so at the end, we go from a 
comp that was uh, 169,000 to, well, if it was more similar in terms of these characteristics to the subject property, it would actually have sold for 167,000. And then we do that for each of these other comparable sales. And now we have these three different adjusted estimates of value using these three different comparables. And so the final step is to weight them. I mean, which one most accurately reflects what the subject value, uh, the subject property's value is worth? And so maybe, you know, comparable two, we thought that this was just a uh, this comparable was just so much more similar than the other ones. And so we want to lean more heavily on using this estimate than the other two. So we'll give 50% of our weight to comparable two, 30% to comparable one, and then 20, the remaining percent allocation to comparable three. And we use that kind of weighting method, just like you would do with portfolio weights. Uh, it's going to be that 30% times this value this comparable to it's going to be 50 percent times comparable to's adjusted price and then the sum of these three weighted values is our final reconciled value for the subject property so this is our estimate of value for the subject property okay one other thing to show you one other alternative is that you know in this case we had the numbers so we were able to use them and we were just kind of pretending that these numbers were accurate but in reality, and for the exercise that I'm going to give you, um, we don't have those numbers to work with. And so I want to introduce to you an alternative method called the relative comparison analysis. And we, we talked about in the previous video, it's this idea of pluses and minuses, better or worse, superior or inferior. We follow the same sort of setup. So, you know, we still have our comp sale prices. We still have our transaction adjustments. In this case, we can still keep them as dollars because um, we don't really have many transaction adjustments to make. But then take a look at our adjustments for property characteristics. We've completely eliminated any sort of dollar thing going on. And we've gone to uh, similar, better, or worse. We're just sort of ranking it. So 0 0.5 acres, we go back here, 0 0.5 acres. Comp one had 0 0.5 acres. The other two comps were smaller. So comp one here, similar in terms of acreage. Um, and then, well, in this case, maybe we should say worse in terms of acreage because it's smaller for these other two. And then uh, let's say effective age. Uh, the subject is younger, three years old, whereas the others are all older. So we just say yeah, they're they're older. It's, it's a worse condition property than than the subject. And um, I don't know. Let's take a look at living area. So living area, nineteen hundred square feet. This one's bigger. Uh, this one's a little bigger, and then this one's smaller. So we would say um, this one's better. This one's maybe better, and then this one's smaller. Same idea. And then what we do at the end is we just sort of ignore the similars maybe, and we say, okay, how many uh, betters versus how many worse? And in this case, we have two betters and only one worse. So we say that this property really on the whole, we don't try to differentiate which is most important here, but we just kind of say on the whole, you know, a buyer would probably consider this property as being better, superior than the, the subject property. So the sale price then is probably, you know, it'd be kind of a stretch for the subject property to reach this sale price because, you know, you, in, in this market, you could get something that's superior for that price. So it's not going to top that. And then likewise, you know, maybe comp sale two, we see that it's got approximately the similar number of better as well as worses. Um, and so we're going to say that's similar. And then comp three. 157. This one's got a lot more worses, <laughs> you can see, than it does betters. And so we see that that, uh, that comparable really just not as good as the subject property. And so the relative comparison analysis, it's nice because we, we just kind of had to use judgment and common sense. 
And we didn't have to throw numbers out there that didn't really have any, you know, backing in, in reality. And what we end up with is a kind of a bracketing for what the subject property is worth. So comp uh, sale two is the most similar, and that's 167K. Comp sale one is probably better than the subject property, that's 169. And then comp sale three, much worse than the subject property, and that's 157. So what we're saying is that, well, we know it's worth more than 157. We know it's less than 169. And the probable amount is probably, you know, roughly around 167. So we say a range of, say, uh, 168 to 169 for the subject property. It helps us to, it, it's not as precise, but it helps us to kind of narrow in on a range, to, to bracket the reasonable price range for the subject property. And you can maybe sense um, during this talk that there's a lot of subjectivity involved with this. So uh, you have to use judgment, basically. Judgment and experience.